fearless sisters. This is Dr. V and here is the tea. Hello and welcome to Tea with Dr. V. Dr. V here and T stands for Turn Everything Around. We welcome you into conversations where it's not me, it's not Dr. V that wants to turn everything around, but having a conversation about how our God offers us the opportunity to turn everything around when we jump into his word and his precepts to understand what he promises, what he offers, and who you are when you're in his word. So right now, I want you to tap subscribe and the bell so that you get every single notification that comes through every time we open up another conversation. So let's dive into this one. So when I was sipping my tea during this season and time, when I know there are so many of us who feel like we are running a marathon in the dark, filled with uncertainty, it reminds me of a story that I often tell, a running story, you know me. There was a time when, you know, I trained with a group of ladies and pre-COVID, we would spend time preparing for races and they were my running buddies. I used them to help me train, used them to help me pace. But one particular race, no one, nobody was available. And I had to run this race all by myself. And not only was it a race that I had to run, but it was a race where you ran the entire course in the dark. There were only spots here and there where there were street lights for us to guide our path, but most of the race was run in the dark. Well, I decided to go ahead and, and run that race. I prepared, I thought, but I was going to run it alone. So I was unsure of how it was going to go. Well, race day came and I was there feeling lonely, feeling uncertain. This was something I had never done before. I had never run a race all by myself. And I began to question, can I actually do this? Well, just as soon as I started questioning myself, the gun fired and the race began and I just started running. I just started doing what I normally did. And then there, there was this woman. I saw her up ahead of me. She was just ahead of where I was. I didn't know her, but she seemed to kind of be in pace with what I was used to. So I used her as my pacing partner for the whole race. I never knew her name, never talked to her, but I stood right behind her and used her pace to help me keep pace in the race. Well, we ran the whole race and, and she knew, had no idea I was behind her until we got to the end. Just as we were getting towards the finish line, you could see the finish line up ahead. It was just ahead of us on the horizon, but we had to go around a bend in order to actually access the finish line. Well, she was still ahead of me, and as she turned that bend, I watched her countenance drop. Her shoulders dropped, her head dropped, and she began to stop. Well, she was right in front of me. So as I turned the bend, I realized what had happened. The race, we had been running, giving our all. And between us and the finish line was this hill. <laughs> they had the nerve to put a hill at the end of the race between us and the finish line. And in her mind, it was just too much. But I had been using this sister for the whole race. And when I got next to her, I screamed out at her that we have been through too much for you and I to stop now. Finish strong, come on, we've done too much together. 
she looked at me and I started sprinting. So she started sprinting. We sprinted that hill and sprinted all the way to the finish line. And I'm screaming the whole time, finish strong, finish strong. We crossed the finish line together. She turns to me and grabs me and hugs me and goes off into the dark. I don't know her name to this day. I couldn't even pick her out of a crowd if you asked me to. But for that race, for that moment, running in the dark, where at different points in the race, at the beginning, I wasn't sure I could do it. At the end, she wasn't sure she could do it. We leveraged our power at different moments in time to help each other get to the finish line. And we didn't even have to know each other. In a season like this, where many of us have felt like we are running in the dark, we are uncertain, we're not sure, we're telling ourselves, I don't think I can continue to do this. And people keep screaming, personal self-care. I tell you, if I hear one more person talk about self-care. Now, don't get me wrong. We each have responsibility for our practice, our training, our process. We absolutely have responsibility with that. But I'm challenging us to tap into a quote that actually went viral in the middle of the pandemic. And the quote went something like this. I'm paraphrasing. But we scream personal care at people who actually need community care. And that's how we fail them. Yeah, that resonates with me. Because even when we have trained and we are prepared, there are moments in time when the weight by ourselves is just too much. And there's an opportunity for us to tap into community care. And that brings me to the word of accountability. But sometimes people use this word looser than it really should be used. See, I'm not talking about accountability by finding somebody to be your cheerleader. I'm talking about accountability where you are finding a collaborator. You see, Proverbs 27, 17 references iron sharpens iron. And when we, I want you to just in this moment, think about that. Iron sharpens iron. Do you hear the clang? Do you see the spark in your mind? See, both need to start off as iron. (laughs) And they were both sharp at one time. They were both once upon a time doing the work that was necessary. They were once both useful in the battle. But in this moment in time, they needed to clang against one another to begin to sharpen each other. When we understand something about iron, iron is actually a fairly soft metal and it is very reactive. It responds to the environment that it is placed in and what it is exposed to. You see, soggy, wet places corrode and rust iron. But dry, heated places make it and keep it useful. Both blades in the scripture make their edges sharper by collaborating, by connecting by even at times clanging against one another. When I think about the accountability of iron sharpens iron and this context of community care, there's some responsibility that both blades must hold. One is that in order for iron to sharpen iron, there has to be a level of vulnerability. You have to be willing to hear. Be willing to also receive the sharpening and then collaborate to fix and become reshapen in the moment. But be careful who you allow to sharpen you. You can't go after or connect with or collaborate with someone who is all about their agenda 
It has to be someone who is able to listen and be responsive to the dull places that are in you, on you, and coming from you. You see, being willing and able to iron, sharpen iron with someone who is being tooled and guided by the word. Hebrews 4.12 tells us word, our word from our God is sharper than any two-edged sword. So be careful who you allow to sharpen you because this process should be reciprocal. There should be reciprocity in iron sharpens iron because both blades become sharper in the process. That rests in what I often tell people, why I'm so stuck on collaboration, so focused on sharing, so guided by making sure that we all win. It's because of this concept of iron sharpens iron, because the process is reciprocal. If we are doing this well, we both get sharpened. Our usefulness both happens in the process of us collaborating. See, what's for me is for me in an iron sharpens iron moment. Because the reason why I'm being sharpened, I will get sharpened at the same time that I am vulnerable. I am receiving and I am willing to be reshaped the same time that anyone I allow with the qualifications of being guided by the word comes into a space to collaborate with me. What's for me will remain for me. There's no need for competition. We can both enjoy our tea. I hope that this has helped you recognize how by understanding who you should be sharpening with, who you add to your community. You and our God can turn everything around. I hope you'll subscribe so that you can stay in the conversation. It's Doc V, and this is the tea.